you know, push through because that was, yeah, another, well, yeah, my journey hasn't been easy by no means. And that was another big thing where it was really close. I to mean, me it to took say, you two years, two years. Yeah. I didn't before play before you even like got to re- really be on the court. Yeah. That first year I played maybe, I don't know, 10 games and yeah. I probably averaged like three minutes a game, two minutes a game. And yeah. Yeah, the last game of the year, I think I had 14 against Oregon in the Pac-10 Pac tournament. And then I was like, that's probably the only thing that like, gave me hope to stay. And I stayed, came back the next year, still a bit up and down. Yep. And after that second the, year, I asked the coach. You put on weight. You put yeah, that weight. was the year after. So okay. the coach, the coach is like, the coach is like, the only reason you're not playing is because you're too skinny. You're too yeah, skinny. At the end of my sophomore year. And, and I'm like, bro, just, let's just put on 10, 15 kilos. In the off season, I met with him in May. I was like, look. Is it worth me coming back here or should I transfer? Like, I want to play. i got two years left. Yeah. Should I transfer so I have opportunity? Because I don't want to have, you know, next year. Like, what do I have to do to ensure that I play next year? Yeah. And he's like, you know, Brock, you just got to put on weight. It's going to, you know, it's going to help your <laughs> passing. It's going to help your defense, your shooting, your rebound. You just got to put on weight. So I told KB that. He's like, all right, we'll prove a point, you know? So put on, like, I came back and I was like... <laughs> 97 kilos. Yeah. I went back there, what, three months later? 113. Yeah, 100, 113. I got to 116, 116 kilos. 116 kilos. So we, he came back. I was like, man, eat everything. Uh, so I had we to just go to did. store, like, buy, like, size 40 or 42 <laughs> jeans. So I, like, came up because I couldn't get any clothes because I was just so big. Yeah. And I went back there, could barely touch the backboard. Like, my knees were hurting. My back was hurting doing sprint, like, up the <laughs> stairs. The coach was like, Rock, like, what's going on? I was like, you know, you told me to, you told put, me on to put on these kilos. Am, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and anyway, yeah, by whether it was from that or not, by the time the season came, like, I'd already lost 10 kilos. I was back to like 103. But yeah, first game against Gonzaga. Can you turn that off? Played 30 something minutes. And then, yeah, I guess the rest was not history, but after that, I had a good, good first game. He felt like he could trust me. And yeah, from that. Was that when you, uh, you had a tour in Australia, right? Tour in Australia, the you following year. my senior year, we yes, uh, okay. the preseason we had a tour out here. But did you ever like think though, like when you're not playing, you fall back into obviously jab step and palm trees and stuff. Yep. You're not in a college system. Yeah. Like, did you ever think I'm just gonna now go back into fill into the system? Uh, well, you know, when you're not playing, you have to do all the extra work, all these things. So I had a key card, and we had you know 24 hour access to the. Uh, practice facility so i just call up friends or some of the managers you know 10 11 o'clock i'm not a big party guy big anything like that so i'd call them up tuesday wednesday thursday whatever night you know i'm sitting in, sitting in my room it's like 11 o'clock and i was call, hey, you want to come rebound for me and you know we just go shoot for an hour clay was big on that I, he'd just walk past my door and say hey man i'm going to shoot you want to go and i'd like get into bed it was like 10 15 i'd be like okay yeah. and he just go put on music and we'd just be there an hour and a bit, and I sort of got that off him because I played with him there my first two years, and my second year I sort of saw what he was about, and obviously how he is now. But he was your roommate, correct? He was my roommate, and yeah, just seeing his work ethic, like he was already the star, mm. and he was destined for big things already, and he probably didn't have to do all that, like he was killing games, killing practice. But a couple times a week, he just randomly go in there late at night, and I just sort of caught on to that. And then when he left, he obviously got drafted. I had two years left, and I just thought that was such a cool thing, like going there late night. Why not? Like, what else are yes, you doing? Sure just so. sitting in your room. So, yeah, I think that helped me. And can I interject real quick? Yeah. Uh, I, I remember you once telling me, and maybe I'm, I'm uh, I heard this wrong. I made this up. Yeah. Uh, Kieran, you guys were always big on whoever you want to be or whatever you want to be like. Mm-hmm. You got to act like it. You have to. You have to walk like it. You have to imagine that. That version of Brock, that's the NBA version, right? Yep. And you said while you were shooting, you would pretend that you were Clay Thompson kind of. Yep. 100%. Is that, is that, that's real? Yeah. Oh, 100%. Like, he's the greatest shooter I've ever seen. He is the greatest. Okay? So, yeah, yeah. watching him, you know, it's really pretty jump shot. His yeah. swishes are like the way, yeah, I've never seen anybody splash the way he does and uh even though my shot back then was like you know back behind my head like mm, yeah, yeah. slingshot type yeah. in my head i was like damn i shoot just like him like my form is just the same the way i swish like yeah i only told you guys this but 
yeah, in my head, and still when I'm in a in a shooting slump or I haven't made a couple, or you know, either watch his highlights or and I just like, yeah, imagine myself shooting like him. That was back then. Now you know I've got my own style and own all this stuff, but yeah, back then. That was a, he was a big inspiration for me. He was my friend and whatever. I mean, but not a just, bad person too. Yeah, he, <laughs> one he of the greatest a, shooters ever. Yeah, great shooter. And I just yeah visualized that's how that's how I was shooting. Even though you know you look at the tape, it's completely completely different. Right, like right. The way but I felt. The thought was, of that is just is really cool. Yeah, just the way I felt was that, and when I felt like I was in the zone, it was just shooting the same way. And yeah, I think that helped because I was always a solid shooter just because I shot a lot, but. Yeah, after that, I think it helped me go to another level, shooting-wise. 